Hmm. Another doorbell. Sure. You press, you get the mobile app notification. So far, 180. Isn't that bigger than the Akara one? Person detection. Doesn't Reolink already make cameras with the AI? But yeah, mobile app. Hmm. Yeah, mobile app. I knew it. I knew it. You have to use the cloud. <laughs> Another one fails. Or does it? Yeah, I know, another dark camera. So what do we have to have this time? Subscription to receive notification when somebody rings it. Or we need to buy a cloud storage. Or what else did they think of lately in regard to the doorbell cameras? Well, we've seen probably all. So what's so special about this camera? Well, actually, this camera is finally made by the company that makes cameras. So doorbell camera is made by a company that makes cameras. They live out of cameras. Their main product is camera. So if I would be betting on the quality of image, I would be betting on this camera. I may be wrong, but I've seen some tests, what other YouTube creators have said, and it really does have a nice camera. So far I tested it during the day, during the night, and it really worked okay. There are two versions of this camera. POE version, and that is always my preferred choice for most of the devices that I can get to hook up to my network, and there is a Wi-Fi version. There is a downside for this camera. You cannot power it via the batteries, which is bad. Yes? Well, actually, no. I always hated batteries on the doorbells, and you probably want to have doorbell working. So, yes. Having either POE version, which can be hard for some of you to install, but if you already have existing doorbell camera, you can hook it up if your doorbell, existing or old doorbell, was powered via the transformer or power adapter from 12 to 24 volts. If not, you have to hook up the independent power supply. Let's look what's inside the box. You get the camera. You get the external bell, yes, it works out of box, no pairing is needed. You get the mounting bracket if you mount it directly to the door, or tilted bracket if you want to tilt it either on the left or the right side. And of course, everything needed to fix it, mount it, hook it up, plus a very short manual. In terms of image quality, this one is 2K+, whatever that 2K+, actually means. It's a 5 megapixel camera which is similar to the other 5 megapixel cameras that Reolink does. And that's not the only thing that connects the cameras from Reolink with this doorbell. This doorbell features two sensors. And yes, you can play with the sensitivity. You probably do not have ghosts like Matt Work has, so tweak out your sensitivity, either on the motion detection or the person detection. As with any rolling camera, you can also on this camera play with zones. So you can create on the image a zone where you want to ignore motion and the zone that you want to have triggers from the motion received by your system. When we are talking about system, we are talking about rolling app. Actually not. I did install rolling app just to see what I can do with that app that I cannot do without it. But this camera doesn't need any app or cloud to function or to configure it. Let's jump into the configuration screen. When you first boot up your camera, it will show a screen like this. This is a default Reolink camera screen, which is same for any camera from Reolink. The username is admin and there is no set password, but I actually do recommend that you set up a secure password. Not your birthday plus, for example, city where you were born. Use something more secure. Login. And if you have ever seen Reolink camera, not doorbell, but Reolink camera, this is the default screen. All the cameras have screens like this. It starts in a low quality mode to preserve the bandwidth, but you can switch it to the high mode, get better image and enjoy the quality of the image itself. Yes, this view is not spectacular because currently camera is indoors 
as I've finished recording what I needed to record, so it's no longer outside. If you did insert the SD card in the camera, and yes, SD cards are supported up to 256 gigs of storage, you can also play with the playback. Yes, I did insert the SD card, but I never formatted it, so unfortunately I do not have a single event here. But let's go back to preview mode. On the main screen you always have basic settings and advanced settings, but I never play with them, I prefer to go to configuration menu. Based on how your device is installed, you can flip the image or mirror the image, which is not important for me. If you want, you can leave the watermarks, and the watermarks are camera name and date time bottom right and top center. You can of course play with the anti-flicker and decide what to do between the day and night. It can be an auto, color or black and white. If you want, you can set up the privacy mask. For example, you can shade everything and only see directly in front of your apartment, like this. In the advanced settings, you can play with the brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and also you can tweak more precisely what you want to do for the black and white and the color recording. Each of the rarely cameras comes with two streams or substreams. There is a mainstream, that's this one here, it's a maximum resolution. And then we have fluent resolution. This resolution can be, for example, used if you want to stream the camera stream all the time to your TV, your Chromecast devices or something else. As I mentioned previously, and also note to you, Matt Work, there is a sensitivity section here where you can play with the motion detection sensitivity and select also at what time you want to have this motion detection alert you or not. And then we have also smart detection. Smart detection is used to detect not just motion, but people. For those pesky ghosts, if you do have them, you can tweak the alarm delay and, for example, increase it from 0 second to 1 second or 2 second. That means that any object that is in the frame for less than 1 or 2 seconds will be ignored. And sure, there is also object size. And last but not least, in this alarm section we have detection zone. For example, you can say that you want to ignore everything that is grayed out. And then, no matter if the object or person passes in front of the camera where you have put the mask, it will not trigger the alarm or notification. For the status LED, you can set it to be always on at night. And for the infrared lights, I've set them to auto, which I also have with other railing cameras. For audio, we have set up record audio. But one thing that this camera has is also ability to set up voice messages. The camera itself arrives with three pre-recorded messages. You can choose and select after how many seconds of nobody responding, you want to play one or none of these messages. One thing to note, if you want to record your own message, unfortunately you will have to use the Rowling cap. And in the camera section, last is information about the camera itself. Model, unique ID, build number, hardware number, configuration, firmware, etc. Under surveillance section, you can set up what will happen if there is a motion or person detected. For example, record. We can enable, disable, overwrite existing events and also pre-motion record. Pre-motion record means that it will record a couple of seconds, I'm not sure how long, before the event itself happened. So for example, if there is a ball flying towards your window, you will get who threw the ball at your window. And of course we have post-motion record. Then you can also set the schedule for alarm, timers, any motion, person or a visitor. A visitor is a strange name here, but remember it because we will be using it later on. Visitor actually means that somebody did press the button on the doorbell itself. You can set up the email notifications, but of course for that you also need to set up the email server settings, your account settings, etc. Plus also schedule when you want this activity or when you want to receive emails from your system. Then we have ability to use FTP to save those events somewhere. And if you want to play, you can also activate the siren. When you activate the siren, you will once again have option to schedule when you want to have siren activated when the motion is detected. For example, you can do that during the night on each day. And the last option under surveillance is to set up push notifications. In terms of network settings, you can see and modify your network settings. I'm using DHCP server currently, so all those settings are automatically pulled from my router. But you can set it on static and then play with the settings that you want to play with. But besides that, 
let's look at advanced settings. You can enable UPnP, enable UID, enable DDNS, dynamic DNS, set up NTP, which I always do set up because I like to have my cameras have sync time with other devices on the network, so that when I actually need to look at the recording, I know when the recording happened. HTTPS settings, if you want to import your certificate for HTTPS, both certificate and kin file, and one other thing that Akara has, that is port settings. Here you can set up the media port, RTMP, HTTP access, HTTP port, HTTPS, HTTPS port, RTSP and on with. Because we know that other brands of the doorbell cameras... Oh, sorry. Sorry, my bad. Um, this is something that, for example, other doorbell manufacturers do not have. So you either cannot enable on with, or you have problem with the RTSP or RTMP ports. They are not available, not accessible or whatever. In terms of storage, yes, I did insert the SD card, but I didn't format it, which I'll do just now. And now I have 30 gigs of storage available on the camera itself, which actually I will most probably not be using, but it's good to have. Why? I'll show that in a second. And the last option we have here is user management. Okay, in terms of user management, I did create a couple of accounts and I really do recommend that you never ever use your main administrative account in any other integration, such as for example, Home Assistant. For that, I have created additional admin level privileged account that will be solely used by Home Assistant integration itself. Yes, it's supported in the Home Assistant already. If you want to set up date and time instead of using NTP, you can do it here. And maintenance is used for setting up auto reboots and of course, upgrading your firmware. I really do recommend that you try and keep the firmware up to date because firmware not just fixes any potential bugs, but firmware upgrades on the cameras and security devices is important to also tighten up the security. So keep your devices up to date. And yes, this is how the Home Assistant integration looks like. Wait a second. We have mainstream, we have motion detection, person detection, snapshots, substream. So this is a high resolution, this is a low resolution. We have visitor button, meaning when somebody rings the bell, we will get notification, this will return to on. Then we have information about the updates, which currently is not available. I really do wish that Home Assistant would provide me more options. Hmm. If only somebody would update this integration. Oh, thank you, devs. Actually, this is new internal Reolink integration in Home Assistant version 2023.4. Yeah, still not released or actually will be released the same day that this video goes out. We now have option to select auto quick reply, turn it off or those three pre-recorded messages. We can enable or disable infrared lights, enable or disable recording, start the siren, see the things that we already seen. So we have information about motion, person, visitor. Plus we also have ability to enable mainstream and snapshots, but that's not all. We can play with the AI person sensitivity, we can select here how long after the doorbell has been pressed, the auto message that we selected here will be played after. Select day night mode, email on event, FTP upload, motion sensitivity push, record, siren on event, status LED, and the volume. Yes, you can hear the mic on the doorbell. Unfortunately, if you are using Home Assistant integration, the only thing that is missing here is the ability to use push to speak. So we cannot speak to the person in front of the doorbell. If you want to talk to the people in front of the doorbell, you will have to install the Reolink app, you will have to create the app, and you will have to use the cloud services. If you do not want, or if you can live without it, actually, this camera doesn't ever need any internet access. It will never go out. It will never ask you for anything that cannot be done locally.
Here is an example of automation that you can use. For example, a Reolink with a doorbell POE. Trigger is Reolink with a doorbell motion started detecting motion. This should be triggered when the doorbell detects the motion. You can of course use here instead of that also when somebody presses the button. But for example, let's look at this case here. When this trigger is triggered, we then use this action. For example, camera play stream. Once again, we are going to play the target stream, which is real link with the doorbell POE on the media player. In this case, this is my Google Hub, Google Nest device. And we are using HLS format because I think that this one should work for the Google Display devices. We click save and click on save and let's run it. But is that all? Actually, no. Remember, this doorbell from Reolink is actually a camera. And that means that if you, for example, have a Synology NAS, you can add it as a camera in your Synology NAS and record everything on your network attached storage. Yes, sure, you can use other surveillance software. For example, you can hook it up to Frigate, you can hook it up to MotionEye, you can hook it up to whatever system you want. And this camera will play as a normal IP camera. The setup procedure for this camera is pretty simple. You type in the name, select the IP address or use search button to find it. Remember previously, I've showed you that you can set up turn on and off on with support. I've turned it on. It's on the port 8000. Select all functions, type in the username and password, load configuration, test connection. And if everything is OK, connection successful, just click on save. As with any other Synology IP camera, for example, because this is a Synology surveillance station, you can then set up the video information, advanced settings, recording schedule, normal schedule for detection, for the stream, advanced settings, live view information, optimize whatever you want to optimize. And of course, you can play with the event and tempering. Sure, I know. Other company has recently released their own door camera and they have a bunch of creators doing uh, sponsored videos telling you how good that camera is. It probably is good camera with a much narrower field of view, with batteries that you have to replace, with lack of RTSP if you're not using HomeKit, with no ability to integrate in Home Assistant. Actually, this camera is really awesome. And that's why this is the first device from me that will be receiving my stamp of approval. And do you remember what my stamp of approval is? Actually, it goes to devices that do not need any kind of a cloud support, that work locally, and that you can hack and play as much as you like. No subscription is needed, no special accounts, special services, etc. It's your device. You bought it. You control it. Yes, unfortunately, as I mentioned, you cannot talk through this doorbell if you do not use the cloud app. But I consider that just a minor problem that I have no issue with. But don't take me wrong. The other cameras are also good. For example, you may not have Ethernet access, you may not have power socket nearby. So using a battery powered camera, while I wouldn't prefer that, is your only option. So that's why you can go with the other options too. But if you are going with the other options, look at a couple of other things. For example, how easy it is to integrate that camera in whatever setup you are currently using. If you are not using Home Assistant, if you are, for example, using Samsung Smart Things or Google Ecosystem, check that that camera works with that ecosystem too. For example, this one also works out of box with the Reolink mobile app, with the Google Smart Assistant. So whatever you go, just be careful to find device that will be supported in the future and that doesn't cost a lot monthly to see the recordings from your own doorbell. But in my case, as I mentioned, this camera is receiving my first ever hardware stamp of approval. And if you do think that this camera is good and that this video is good, please share it with others by clicking the like button down below. Like button really helps out others see this video. So the more likes the video gets, the more people will be able to see this video. And I really do thank you for all of the support. 
but I also want to thank all those wonderful YouTube channel members that have been supporting me for the long, long, long time. Thank you all for all of your support. And thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so for $2 or €2 Euros per month by becoming a YouTube channel member. Or you can go to my merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have a